Spike. It's Chris. So. 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 Yeah. So, so. Here we go again. Hopefully we can actually get this out sometime in the same month we recorded. Of your goodness. Close enough. Because it is time. Ta -ta. Ah, it is June 13th, 2021 as we record this. Whether we'll get this out today or not. Mm -hmm. We'll see. This one, apparently, for the one who is such a film enthusiast, he cannot quite get his head I wrapped around the concepts of, the concepts of editing video. At least you, hey, at least we are not looking at actual film having to splice Using a using an exacto knife and scotch tape to try to keep the thing together. But. Sadly, this is like learning how to do this is like learning math. I was horrible at math in school, and now here I am, and I'm just looking at all this stuff, and I'm like, "What does this mean? What does this right mean?" Over his head. And like, I don't understand, it's and I should. And it's not, it's not even, not even like it's that difficult I know. because I and that's did what the makes heavy me lifting feel bad. For him. I put the little blurbs down here at the bottom in the right order for him. I put the little bug over here in the corner. I've got all these things laid out. The stuff at the end, I even put the little theme music in for him and everything. Cannot figure out how to do this. That's all right. I'll keep sending you home with the raw video files, and you can try to figure it out. Nice so we'll, <laughs> I'll wind up putting the stuff out. I have usually do. It's just I'm gonna have to make time to do it. And I, I'm starting to wonder <clears throat> if I'm just one of those things that is like a, a big thinker. You can't be but the idea I man. To... I'm the idea man. I'm well, the creative one. Too. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Mm. Hey. What episode was this? Number 162? I've put out 162 episodes. Hey, oh, don't make me feel even worse than I am, man. Anyway. Hello, Happy Camper. Something happened this past week back on, what was it, Wednesday, the 8th of June? Disney Plus debuted Loki, the first episode. And pretty much everybody online has an opinion about it, so I guess we're pretty much required to have one, too. Yay! Yeah. I know everybody on Comics Gate, on the uh, on the anti woke side hates it. The woke side loves it because they came up with a little screen still that he was gender fluid, and so <clears throat> that's the only reason. One reason, one side loves him because they showed he was gender fluid. The other side hates it because, well, you talk about episode one and you tell them why everybody would hate it for apparently pissing all over the first three phases of the MCU, okay, according so to the comics The game. reason why I know people hate it I have opinion, is, is nothing to do with that, because okay. I didn't even notice. <laughs> like that, I didn't even notice the whole, oh, he's supposed to be this way. Of course, I don't look at this the word market. I don't care, here. so I guess I just it just yeah. passed. Sometimes it slaps you in the face, and then sometimes it doesn't. And in this case, I was just like, it didn't... It did not register. It was slow. The episode was slow, but I mean, it's only the first episode. It was slow, but it wasn't bad. You got to see Loki be Loki, but there's something big that does happen in the show, which is what makes other people mad, from what I'm understanding. And that is, he finds out how small he really is. <laughs> uh, throughout the show, it's basically about Loki. What do you want? Like, what? How can we help you? Type of deal, you know. And he's like, I'm a, I'm an Asgard. I'm this. I'm that. And everybody's like, literally, like, <laughs> and you know, laughing at him because he's like, I'm Almighty and all that. And then he finds out how small he really is, which is the scene. Spoilers alert. Spoiler, spoiler. Which is the scene where he finds out that they have a drawer full of Infinity Stones. We're talking about the same stones that Thanos went through I don't know what and did I don't know what just to get these darn stones. People died. Worlds were destroyed. And they use them for paperweight. May he feel this small. 
Which is why other fans are angry because they're like, <clears throat> this person died, this person died, this person died. They went and did this, they went and did that. Four of these Infinity Stones, and they use them for paperweight? What the heck? Which, honestly, I laughed at. I did. I laughed because I was like, yeah. I mean, one person's world problems is actually a joke to somebody else because they either been through worse or they're just like, really? You broke a nail. Big whoop. You know, type of deal. That's that's how I'm taking it all. But all in all, I liked the episode. It was pretty good. Slow, but it was good. First episodes on these Marvel shows are always slow. Yeah, this time the last is in January. They drag, <laughs> man. Um, and drag in more ways than one. But man, do they drag. One division. Remember how much difficulty we had getting through the first episode? Which is why... Which is why they put out the first yeah. two. Which is <laughs> the smartest thing Disney did. Yeah. This first <sighs> episode is not as bad as that first episode. Yeah. <laughs> so, you liked it? I thought it was okay, but again, it is just the first episode. Yeah. And they are an hour long. Yeah, these episodes Unlike, are longer than the, yeah, than what the others One division was like, what, only, only 30 minutes or something? Roughly thirty minutes. Oh with if it, if they had put it on broadcast television, they would have probably stretched it out to an hour if they put in some supplemental material or or put some yeah put some of the other things in. But uh, hmm. this one ran for episode one of Loki. I think ran fifty one minutes, which would have put it somewhere at about an hour and a half with ads on a broadcast like on ABC broadcast. It would have been an hour and a half show, a nine minute show. Okay, so let's break down the review here on, on Loki. Uh, you liked it. I liked it. Okay, that puts us apparently in the majority of opinions because I, I have not seen Rotten Tomatoes within the past 36 hours. But uh, the critics seem to like it, and the fans on Rotten Tomatoes, well, the last I checked 36 hours ago, seemed to like it. The initial reaction was good. <coughs> like I said... There's a group of haters online who just want to hate this show. They want to hate this show because one thing, okay, Loki's gender fluid. If you don't like Loki because he's gender fluid, it's just as stupid as liking Loki because he's gender fluid. If you're basing your opinion on the entire show on that, just go ahead, take yourself, and just move on over to the kiddie table, let the grown-ups talk, okay? Now, we're here, we're grown-ups here, all right? Kids' gender fluid has nothing to do with this. The people who are crying right now because of the, of the big pile of infinity stones, you're the people comic book fans hate. Okay? I hated you back in 85 when they did Crisis on Infinite Earths because I was like, why are you destroying all these wonderful ideas, all these different planets, they had to come up with all these different Earths and stuff just to keep you anal retentive morons off of their backs. Julie Schwartz hated you guys. Marv Wolfman hated you guys. Peter David hates you guys. Jeff Johns, and he, and boy, he's a, he, he can do continuity porn like nobody's business. He hates you guys. Jim Shooter hated you guys. The entire Marvel bullpen hates you guys. The entire DC bullpen hates you guys. Todd McFarlane over with Spawn Universe hates you guys. The guys over in Japan who do the manga that you just come all over yourselves over hates you guys. They all hate you continuity cops. Screw you guys, okay? I think there's a difference <clears throat> between comic book people and theater people. Now, no. I, I'm well. I mean, go I mean, ahead, make your point. Here's the I'll thing. Say no. Like, this is what, the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of these people had no idea who the who on earth the Avengers were until the movies started coming out. Mm -hmm. Okay, I remember Infinity War. Everybody in the world cried when their favorite heroes were dying off, <clears throat> and I'm just like. 
Or we'll be when back. Sp when Spider-Man died at the end of Infinity War, yeah, and, and he, just and he away, just, and he's he's sitting there saying, "I don't want to die," and he he just turns to dust and Iron exactly. Man's spoilers. He turns to dust in, in Iron Man's arms. That was the meatiest role, Mountain Morton. Robert Downey Jr. ever had. I was about to call him Morgan Jones. Even though we <laughs> we already knew that there was another Spider-Man movie yeah, with we, him coming out. You knew better, like, but you still you invested yourself in it. And you were like, oh my god, that's so pathetic and so sad and so heartbreaking and stuff. And now you're all upset because, what, all that was meaningless? This is a joke to you? Is this a joke to you? Am I a joke to you? What are you, Joe Pesci you want to be? You <laughs> sit down and back Back to funk up and think for a second. Okay. We have, what is this, the Time Traveling Authority or whatever they're called. I forgot what they're called. Whatever. Basically the Time Police. I'm, I'm going to call them 3TA because I've, I've been trying to get the 3TA hashtag started. Then there's this asshole. Anyway, you know what this reminds me of. And I thought about this the instant I saw these guys turn up out of nowhere to catch Loki. With Loki escapes in the one of the Avengers movies with the little the little MacGuffin cube, okay? Guy's got an entire desk full of MacGuffins. That's what I thought when I saw the all the infinity stones and stuff and I actually laughed out loud when I saw it. <sighs> okay, these guys are supposed to be time cops. I was thinking he Legends of Tomorrow. Uh -oh. The C W show. That's what this is supposed to be. This is Marvel's version of Legends of Tomorrow, but they're doing it a lot less goofily than the Arrowverse did it in the CW, okay? That was just a mess. <clears throat> Marvel has always been more of a technical geek kind of comic shop than DC was. DC were the guys who would pull stuff out of their butts and like, here, you can have an Earth, and you 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 have an Earth. They even had to bring it back, 52 Earths, just to get you continuity porn cops to shut up. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. When I saw that drawer full of Infinity Stones, and I knew everybody was losing their stuff when they were seeing it, y'all don't understand, okay? <clears throat> and I'm sure Loki is going to step this through because they're going to do it much... Marvel has always been better at explaining this stuff than DC has or that I ever have. The look on his face when he saw that. Really? He saw that. And he, he's like, how did you get the Infinity Stones? Oh, we use them as paperweights here. They got thousands of them. They got thousands of them because they're dealing with a concept, not not the multiverse. They're dealing with multichronal technology or multichronal theory. Okay. Basically, it's timeline theory. You have one timeline, okay? So, you've got a set of infinity stones in your timeline, all right? And you're just booking right along. Boop, 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 boop. In one timeline, Tony Stark winds up in a cave with a box of scraps. That's your main timeline. He becomes Iron Man, kicks butt, and everybody's like, yeah, ACDC becomes the best selling Iron Man. No. <laughs> Chugga, 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 chugga down the main timeline. There's a timeline where it's not Tony Stark who becomes Iron Man. It, he just dies in the cave, and that offshoots. Well, guess what? There's a set of Infinity Stones in this main timeline. Tony Stark dies in this other timeline, and the MCU is stillborn. There are no Marvel movies made. But there's a set of Infinity Stones over here. So now you've got the main timeline, which has a set of Infinity Stones. And over here you got Infinity Stones, okay? Mm. Thanos knows nothing about timelines. He's an idiot, okay? All he knows is power and his gauntlet, and he just wants to farm potatoes off on Pluto or whatever, and worship death yeah, or whatever. But he thinks he's the... Like every other goth in the history of ever. Anyway, or at least in the Pacific Northwest. Anyway. Every time there's a divergence, there's a divergence here, there's a divergence here, there's a divergence here, there's a divergence here. And that's what these time cops are trying to do. Shut these down, because every time there's a divergence, oops, there's another set of infinity stones. But guess what? There's also another Mjolnir. There's another cosmic cube. 
essentially a bunch of different cosmic cubes existing in the main timeline. So all these other little cosmic cubes. When Loki escapes from custody and is trying to escape his fate dying at the hands of Thanos in Avengers Infinity War, basically he's just Xeroxed every the Cosmic Cube, the Infinity Stones, Mjolnir, Thor, Loki himself, all these others. Loki is a replicant. Lo the Loki we're dealing with right now who is sitting here in the Time Lord's yeah, I went there. The Time Lords offices and stuff. I'm just going to call them Time Lords because that's what that's they are. Wild. Yeah, the Time Lords. So they're in the Time Lords office and he's just a pale copy of main timeline Loki who died at the hands of Thanos, right? And everybody who died at the hands of Thanos. Why were you people not crying in the, about how you just completely disrespected all these deaths in Endgame. Not a single one of you sat there and wailed or gnashed your teeth or ripped your garments when Tom Holland came back. Okay? When Tom Holland came back in Avengers Endgame, you were cool with that. Now you're upset because there's a, a second set of Infinity Stones. Your actions have consequences. That's what Loki is about. That's what Loki never learned. He does not know his actions cause consequences yeah. for people. He thinks he doesn't care about anybody. And that's what the whole show, the that's whole what first the entire episode is about. Freaking first episode is about. That's what the entire freaking show is going to be about. Because the first episode is supposed to set up the basic tenet of the rest of the story. Okay? So, if we're... You're reacting, you're knee-jerk, emotionally reacting because you think they just cheapened the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They just whizzed all over it. Hey, you did that when you cheered in Endgame when everybody came back. You whizzed all over the MCU when you, when you sat there and you That's said, a lot of you. you undid everything, all the damage that was done in Infinity War. They undid it. Because we we snapped our fingers and Tony Stark's so awesome and all this other stuff, yeah. Yeah, and you just whizzed all over it. Hey, who's the new Captain America? Captain America is supposed to be living with his his beloved Sharon Carter or whatever. Or often, they're both like 2,000 years old living off in Missouri or something now. But you sat there and gave us another seven episodes with with uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which of them, one of them becomes Captain America. Spoilers, it's Sam. <clears throat> Did you not just cheapen Captain America by, by giving it to another person? And also, the timeline on that is like, okay, so we lived all the way up to now knowing who Captain America is. He ended it with him going back in time, staying with, with his woman. Right. Except, that also means that another world went without a Captain America this entire time. Yep. Mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Yep. That's how time works. <laughs> see, the the, and the, that's the other thing, too. His relative timeline, and they're going to get into this. They have to, Only because this is, this is one of the core arguments here. I'll make a point here in a minute. Uh, one of the core <laughs> arguments is there's a standard timeline and a relative timeline. Okay? Standard timeline, they're saying that these three time lizards, you're supposed to have three time lizards in charge of everything, and they've put the, the time lords in charge of being time cops and stuff, right? Right. So it's these three lizards that are supposed to determine exactly what your, uh, what the timeline is supposed to be. So everything's predetermined, right? Guys, this is nothing new. This goes back like 6,000 years. Moses was arguing about this on the, on the mount, okay? Is, is everything predetermined? Well, if you're talking about the timeline everybody shares, then yeah, everything tends to chug along without you because guess what? In the grand scheme of things, you're meaningless. You're worthless. 
your free will comes from your relative timeline. Captain America, when Steve Rogers at the end decided, you know what, I've had enough of this hooey, I'm going to actually go back and, and console myself with, with her for, from like 1945 on. He exercised free will and made his choice to go back in his own relative timeline. So now he gets another 60 years of life. He, Captain Steve Rogers, by the time we get to Loki here, Steve Rogers is going to be somewhere around, hold on, let me count. Uh, he's going to be about 150 years old. And he looks like he's 80. He looks like a World War II vet. Because he's lived his life twice. Because he went through the first time in suspended animation. And who says that's not the aberration? Bucky was supposed to be dead in World War II. And in the comic books, Bucky was dead for decades. It was the one rule set in stone at Marvel. You don't bring back Bucky. Stan Lee put that rule down. Don't you dare bring back Bucky. Bucky is dead. Steve has to live with it because it was such a vital part of Steve's character. And Ed Brubaker said, F. Stan Lee, guess what? And he gave Steve Rogers a cosmic cube, and basically Steve Rogers had, the universe asked Steve Rogers, hey, make a wish. I wish I had my best friend back. Done. And that's how Bucky survives World War II and becomes the Winter Soldier and goes through all this stuff and becomes a, is manipulated by the Soviets and goes through all this stuff. And yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what Loki is trying to address. Steve Rogers has done more to mess with continuity and timeline by himself than anybody else. You could argue that Thor has been screwing with continuity. You can argue that Tony Stark's been screwing with continuity. Tony Stark should not be able to build an arc reactor. He has violated he should so be many. In prison. He is violent. Yeah, it, honestly. <laughs> just for violating the laws of physics, if nothing else, with his arc reactor. But all of these people bent the direction of the universe to their will. Bruce Banner should be a smear, a grease smear in the deserts of Nevada from a hydrogen bomb test that went wrong. He shouldn't have survived that, but he did. He became the Hulk. We have all these things, and all of that is going to be addressed in Loki if the writers are any good. See. i got to admit, I'm seeing promising signs from this first episode, but again, first episode. Okay. These are, now if I'm correct, these are not the writers on WandaVision, these are not the writers on Falcon and Winter Soldier. Oh, this is a different set of writers, isn't it? I know I Kevin Feige is still in charge, but... I have no idea who's... I don't know. As far as I know, it's different different creative teams on each of these. I but. did realize that in the credits, even though I didn't see her, they had Tara Strong on there. And I'm a big fan of Tara Strong. And I was like, who did she play? And I'm thinking, I think, I, I didn't pay attention to the character's name, but she was the Southern cartoon character that came to explain the timeline. Most likely because she's known as a voice actress too. Yeah. Well, that's all she does. Yeah, much. But, yeah, I saw that and I was like, oh, Tara? <laughs> Tara's here? Hey. But, yeah, so. Yeah. But, I, I, you know, I was. One funny thing that I was thinking about, though, was what if this was like, a, you know, the Time Lords kind of uh, bump heads with uh, whoever the Doctor Strange people, you know, are? Because you gotta think. It's kind of, I mean, they mess with a lot of stuff. And they're trying to keep things in order with the time. And yeah. I was like, uh... Let me, give you, <laughs> let me give you a theory. This is a theory of magic that I developed. Just keeping up with guys like Doctor Strange, Doctor Fate, Doctor Occult, Doctor Thirteen, and all the other crew at Scrubs. Here's my idea of what magic is. 
Okay? You have science and you have magic. Okay? Everybody thinks science is... I'm trying to watch the camera here so I can get track of where I'm at. Everybody thinks science is over here and magic is like over here. Okay? Never the two shall meet. They're two entirely different things. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This is physics. This is magic. Physics doesn't give a crap if you're using science to manipulate it or magic. It's all physics. It's all basic fundamental energies. Okay? Energy E equals mc squared. Energy is mass at the speed of light. That's what that means. Okay? So, an energy particle is a particle of mass that's traveling at the speed of light. That's what the c squared is, the speed of light. Right. <clears throat> so it doesn't... That little energy particle and that little mass particle and the speed of light, none of that gives a crap whether you're using magic or science to manipulate it. Science is an artificial way to manipulate the forces of nature around you, to make lasers, to make gunpowder, to make tesseracts, to make all this other stuff. Magic is a natural way to manipulate directly the forces of the universe around you. So. Reed Richards needs to use a gun or a computer or a console or some kind of MacGuffin or doohickey in order to manipulate the basic fundamental forces of the universe. Stephen Strange flips him the finger and he manipulates the for same forces in the same way. It's just one needs a gadget in order to do it than the other one does. Bet you money for all the talk about Phase four, and maybe I'm reading way too much into this. I've done it before, although I tend to come out correct more often than not. True? True. Anyway, phase four will not be about social justice. Bet your money, phase four is about the new age of magic, in which there is a new understanding of science and magic and how the two relate. And it becomes almost a side, it becomes almost a subplot of every movie from here at this point forward. You're going to have Doctor Strange on one side leading the forces of magic saying, we can do this, we just have to have the will and the, and the willingness to do it. And on the other side you're going to have Reed Richards who says, we can build the gadgets to do this, we just have to have the will and the willingness to do it. And they're both going to be going for the same thing and they're going to be butting heads the entire time. I'm all for it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Maybe well, I'm all for it. Maybe I mean, I'm full of hooey. It's been no Marvel, happening Marvel, before. Marvel does do a good job at just, you know, putting the... Even something that has happened a long time ago, they know how to put things together. Like, I was actually watching uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Mm -hmm. And I know people have put, that, put this together in certain things. But there's a scene where... Uh, What's, his, what's the actor's name? Something Glover. Yeah, uh, I know who you're talking about. Like but he's Danny like Glover, putting uh, stuff in his trunk when Spider-Man comes to question him. And like Webb shoots his hand on the trunk. And he says, I don't want to have nothing to do with this because I have a nephew here. And everybody's like, Miles Morales. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I started a really like, I mean, I know I've heard that before. But I really started to think about it. I was like... You know what? They will actually probably do this. <laughs> they will actually probably do this. And then everybody be thinking back to this one moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. it's a, oh, there's a whole story involved in that just for, through the Marvel. Back when Marvel actually gave a crap about the content of their comic books. The, the ult, Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was Ultimate Peter Parker, and it, the whole idea was to take Peter Parker back to his roots, and but treat him like a teenager in the 90s. The idea was to a reboot, and so and event and it did great for a hundred some issues, okay, and they fell into the same trap all over again, did it all over again. Spidey's in some kind of romantic entanglement. Spidey's trying to go to college. Spidey's growing up. Spidey's getting older. Meh, 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 meh. And the guys at Ultimate said, you know what? If we want to do this, we'd be writing Amazing Spider-Man, not Ultimate. They killed Peter Parker off and replaced him with Miles Morales. Just like, bam. Just execute him. Start over with Miles Morales. Just like you saw in the movie. 
it was mighty, mighty close to what happened in Ultimate Spider-Man. Which I don't think that they'll actually do that if they do bring Miles Morales in. I don't think they'll actually kill off Peter Parker. Just saying because there's too many Peter Parkers. Because, again, Spider-Man's big... Sony and Spider-Man beat the Marvel Universe to this. Yes. Do you realize Into the Spider-Verse is what Loki wants to be? You guys are forgetting uh, these lessons that Marvel's trying to give you. There's all yes. kinds of different things out there. And we've still got What If coming this fall. Yes. That's going to blow some minds. Yeah. Because especially the continuity cops. But all the Johnny DCs. That's going to freak people out. <laughs> that'll be fun. Uh, that'd be, yeah, that'd be fun. That'd I'd be like fun that. to watch. But anyway. So you got any final words to say about Loki? Should, should they watch episode two? Oh, yeah. I mean, again, you should give it a shot and see what happens. I mean, the first episode was not bad at all. It just opens your mind to a whole new thing. And basically, the first episode was just all about, hey, dude, you're not all as mighty as what you may think. The and world is not about you, and that is exactly, anti. That's basically, yeah. That is the anti-social justice warrior thing. So... That is that is as close to anti-political as you can get right now. And it was all because he opened that drawer. All because he had... <laughs> That's all right. because he couldn't keep his nose clean. He couldn't keep his nose out of that. He just exactly. had to look. I, I want mean, my Tesseract back. The, wor the world literally changed all because that one moment he opened that drawer. Like, think about it like that. Mm -hmm. That is a big deal. Just opening a door to anything... Could change everything, and it's just so crazy that that like I mean, yeah, I didn't think about it like it until now. Now I'm like, and the best part wow, is, and the best part is, in this scene, and again, this is just the first episode. In this scene, Loki's threatening one the office guy who owns that desk. Yeah, he's threatening the life of this guy, and he's like, "What are you doing? You're threatening me? I mean, I'm, yeah, he did. What you're gonna kill me? What? <laughs> he's like." I there's like 40 more of me over here on the side. What are you going to do? He was raised there. So I he, think he's yeah. Like, so he, he's like, yeah, here, open it. It's in this door. And so he opens the drawer and takes it. And he's like, yes, I've got it. What is this? And prepare to get your mind blown because yeah, if if Loki is going in the direction I think I'm thinking it's going, this is going to be a fun one. Which also does answer my question. Like I was trying to figure out why would he help the time police? And now I'm like, oh, he knows that this was way bigger than anything. <laughs> like, they don't care here. <laughs> like, whatever your problem is, they don't care here. Or who you are, you have no power here. And also as the god of mischief, that's all professed god of mischief. I do love how they put in the uh, B.D. Cooper, mm -hmm. which I thought was great. Now Loki actually gets to run through all of time and space and mess with people. This is exactly what he wants to do. It's going to be crazy. It's going wait, to be fun. Wait till he triples, trips over Howard the Duck. It's going to happen at some point. Yeah, no, what is that going to happen? They've been teasing that for a while. Oh, yeah. they'll, they'll tease that for from now on. Anyway, we can go ahead and we'll wrap this, this episode up. I'm going to say thumbs up on episode one. Watch episode two and then go back and watch episode one. I bet you're going to you wind up finding all kinds of things because that's what, what one division was like. If if you watched episode four, you need to go back and rewatch one of the other episodes, and suddenly things start making a lot more sense. So, if done correctly, a complicated, convoluted plot line can resolve itself very effectively and very impressively. So, that's the story of the day, to kids. The more you know. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead. And we're going to wrap this episode. We'll. We'll start recording another episode with all your newsish type well, stuff. Well, I was thinking, dude, are we going to talk? Because we're something? already a half hour into this episode, dude. Are we going to talk about Superman? Yes, we're going to talk about Superman and Lois. Because if we do, we might as, we might as well just talk because there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing. <laughs> That's right. There's all kinds there's of things to talk about. We'll, t we'll talk <laughs> later. Y'all take so. care. Until next time, Spike. Chris. So we'll see you down the road. Remember, give Loki a chance. Talk. Just.